Well, we're picking up right where we left off last week. With, uh, yeah, look what we're up to. <laughs> we're building the huge uh, trestle over the big canyon. This is part two. The legs, which are called bents. Yes, and I still want to know why they call them bents unless they do. Well, because they, they shouldn't be bending. They should be straight. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> the straight bents. Anyway, the trestle crosses the, this canyon right here, which also doesn't look much like a canyon just now. But this will be a huge canyon with this huge bridge going across here. It kind of looks like something off the road runner where Wiley Coyote missed. <laughs> So last week we built the deck that goes on top of the trestle and I'm putting a link right here so you can find your way back to that and then we set the deck in place to make sure that it fits. What's with the diving board? <laughs> Speaking of Wiley Coyote right. and the Roadrunner. Ah. Anyway, we're building the bents. You can see one in place here. There's going to be a total of five bents and two abutments holding this deck up when it's all finished. Last week, we also showed how we came up with the design for all of this. This design is slightly different because we decided to follow the Rio Grande Southern practice, which adds two more legs to the bent. And then we added those after the fact. But here's the original design, and you can see 52 inches tall for the four tallest bents. I like the pondering stick figure. Yeah, he's scared because it's a tall bridge. <laughs> yes, yeah, a lot of work there. So the easy way to proceed is to build a jig and build the bents to the jig, and that way they all come out exactly the same. You now I came up with the rather, well, let's face it, silly idea to not make the jig as tall as the bents, simply because I had this piece of shelving material, and I thought, boy, that'd be great for doing the, the jig. It's just not quite long enough. And that's okay because I can just sort of visualize the bottom of it and do it visually. I wish I'd have found a proper length piece of shelving material or wood or something and built the jig full length so that it didn't come up short. Now I started by drawing out the, the design of the bent on the white shelving material so I could see what I was doing and then I glued these little blocks of wood to hold the various elements in place while I was drilling and gluing and, and building the bent. These are just scrap pieces of wood glued to the shelving material to hold everything in alignment. Now it was rather critical that the cap be absolutely at a 90 degree angle to the center legs so that there's no twist in the bridge, so that the top of the bridge, the deck sits on here perfectly level. And so I needed to come in here with my square as I was laying this out and make sure that everything was perfectly square. Then after setting the outer legs in place, I marked that angle with my pencil and then brought it over here to my miter box. And while I can't actually set the miter, I can visualize that by looking at my pencil line here and then use the miter box to ensure that my saw blade is perfectly straight up and down and then just match the angle to the pencil line. And that worked out great. So what's with the blue tape? Well, I was afraid that as I glued the cap to the posts, I might glue the whole thing to the jig. Oh no. So I put this piece of blue painter's tape here so that if I do accidentally glue the whole thing down, I can still pull it up by just pulling the blue tape up right along with it and then come in with some sandpaper and clean the, the bits and pieces of blue tape off the back of the bin. Well, that's a good idea. As opposed to gluing the whole thing oh, to the jig and man. then having to throw the whole thing away. Oh, even the jig. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. So the way I'm going to attach the cap to the posts is actually the same way they did on real trestles, except they didn't use yellow glue. I'm going to start by gluing the cap onto the posts with yellow alphatic resin, yellow wood glue, and then I'm going to drill a hole down through the cap and into the posts and then install a brass wire down through these holes. And that's what they did on the full-size trestles. They put a heavy metal rod down through the cap and into the legs. So I'm actually just following standard procedures here. So how big was that Dremel? 
Well, they must have had a very big... No, <laughs> I frankly don't know how they drilled their big, huge holes. But uh, I hope it was that's, cordless. That's the advantage of, of building things in miniature. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, as I mentioned, I'm using this yellow alphetic resin, and I'm just putting a little dobble do ya right here over those holes, and then I can rotate the cap up into place, and uh, if it accidentally gets glued down, that's why I've got the painter's tape there. And then I'm using super glue and simply super gluing brass rods into those pre-drilled holes. Wow. And uh, boy, when that's set up, now this cap is never coming loose from these posts. And then I just had to come back here with some nippers and chop off the excess brass rod. Well, that's cool. It worked out great. Great. So then the next step is gluing the sills in place, these horizontal pieces that connect all of the legs together. Again, on a full-size trestle, the sills would be solid beams, but in this case, they're just uh, flat pieces that are bolted across the front of the, the posts and help hold everything in alignment. Now I made a mistake on the very first sill that I cut out. You can see that I cut it so that it ends at the, uh, at the posts here. And what it really needs to do is hang out past the posts because there are horizontal elements that go between the bents once the entire trestle is assembled. And so you need to have that extend as you can see in the picture here. So they can't be cut flush to the side of the uh, outer posts. Man, I mean, I've heard of getting a grip, but uh, what's with all the clamps? Well, because like an idiot, I made my jig short off the end of the jig. The posts are trying to warp left to right and front to back. And so I had to use a variety of shims and clamps to pull everything into square as I bolted it together. Wow. So I wouldn't have had to do that had I just made my jig the proper size. Now once the glue set up everything is actually quite strong at this point and I can pull everything up out of the jig and work with it without it being in the jig because it's really quite strong at this point. Now I didn't mark my sway braces on the, the jig here because there's really no need and no point. They run between the sills and uh, so just simply cutting those out so that they fit neatly between the sills this way. Notice that they get substantially longer as they go down the bent. Each section is longer than the section before and therefore at a much more shallow angle. Now where the sway brace overlaps on top of the cap, you can see that it extends uh, out onto the cap and that could be any number of different arbitrary distances. So I chose to make that 13 millimeters and then just simply measured that out and cut each one the same. Did you not measure? That thing's too tall. Well, I, I hoped that it would not come up too short. Right, <laughs> but it's sticking up way past where it needs to go. Well, because there's an ever so slight grade to the trestle, each bent is a slightly different height. So I just made them all grossly oversized and then I can bring them in here and figure out exactly how tall they need to be to go between the floor and the deck and then cut each one to the exact right length rather than trying to build them to the exact right length in the first place. Right. Now it's easy to find on the deck where the bents are going to go because at each of those locations is one of these extensions for the railings that you suggested. Right, I still am afraid of a train falling off. Right, me too. So that was a good idea you came up with to have that little brace there. So there's gonna be a railing attached there but because that's directly on top of each bent, then that makes it very easy to see where the bents need to go as I'm setting these in here to measure them and cut them off to the correct height. So here again, I wanted to make sure that the mud sill at the bottom was going to be perfectly square to the center posts. So I used my square and a ruler and made sure that the very bottom 
of the bent as I cut it off was perfectly square to the center legs. And at this point, uh, the whole thing could be turned over and I was able to glue the sills as well as sway braces on the other side. I was no longer concerned about getting things in square or pulling the warpage out of the wood or anything. At this point, it was very strong. Now, man, that is rusty. Yeah, and this is, this is the exact same construction that you have on a railroad trestle, although this is a, a pier in the ocean. Really? I mean, rusty bolts? I mean, <laughs> why? <laughs> and a, a little bit of crusty with sea salt, just because <laughs> we're at the Ventura Pier. But the idea is the same, and this is the look that I'm after. And I'm actually going to come back and add rust and weathering to my bolts. But these are the bolts that I chose to use. You found some on eBay. I did. In a four millimeter size, but I found some 440s at Albany County Fasteners online. And you can see in the picture there, their website. But they have a whole variety of lengths of these 440 trim hex head cap screws. And then with a proper washer, they actually look pretty darn good holding a trestle together. Well, that's cool. And then using these in conjunction with the four millimeter ones that you found, it gives us a nice variety of size because some of these are going to be larger than others. And I think that looks much better than having everything the exact same size. Exactly. Now I'm just using uh, nuts and washers from Home Depot because they have them there. And I'm just using a regular flat washer, but I'm putting two on each side to give it the necessary thickness so it looks a little bit more like those heavy cast metal washers that you'd see on an actual trestle. Right, and I would think it would help the wood to keep from splitting. It does, yes. So I put all of the various sizes of hardware in this bin. To, Aren't they handy? Oh, it's wonderful because with different sizes of nuts, bolts, and washers, uh, this is my materials list. Oh my. Look at that. Wow. Uh, ended up being 1,852 different pieces of hardware. And, and that's not everything. That's just for the bents. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye. Now, the installation of the hardware is actually quite simple. Tedious. Oh, I can see. Because there's an awful lot of hardware to install. But it starts by drilling the appropriate sized hole for the bolt uh, that you're installing. This is for the larger four millimeter bolt because I'm doing the sills with the four millimeter bolts and then I'm doing the sway braces with the smaller 440 bolts. But you simply go through and drill all of these holes as close to center as you can and then it's a matter of simply coming back and dropping the appropriate uh, bolt into the hole with the appropriate washers and then bolting the whole thing together with a little twisty wrench. Oh boy. Tedious. Yes. But fun. But fun. But fun. But fun. Let's get your thinking done. So I'm using the larger four millimeter bolts on the sills and I thought that would have a nice look if I use the smaller 440 bolts on the sway braces. You just give a nice sort of variety to the look. But I like these heavier four millimeter bolts on the sills. So then I drilled a smaller hole to install my 440 hardware. These bolts are also a little bit shorter because they don't go through three layers of wood. They just go through the sway brace and the post. Again, it's a little bit time consuming. It generally took me about two hours. 
Right. We just play music and sing and act silly while we're doing it. Yes, it's actually a very enjoyable two hours to build oh, yeah. each bent. Or yeah. I should say bolt each bent together because they're already built at this point. They just need to be bolted together. Yes. And then also once they're bolted together, I'm taking each one into the other room, measuring that out, and then cutting it to length. This is the part where I get really nervous. Yeah, what if uh, I cut it too short? Measure five times and cut once. Exactly. Because <laughs> there's no wiggle room here. No, not even. It just has to be absolutely correct. And it cannot wiggle. It cannot wiggle. The fun part of this is, however, you get to see each bent in place and all of a sudden it starts becoming a trestle. It sure does. I also wanted to set the horizontal elements in place here, just some random sticks to make sure that the, that the sills are in the proper location. Horizontal element? Well, I, I don't know what those beams are actually called. Me either, as long as they're not perpendicular. They're, they're horizontal. Yeah, we don't want <laughs> perpendicular. We want horizontal. This way I can check to make sure that they're level when they're sitting between the sills. Yes, and doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, and they, they're perfect. Oh, good. So two down and two to go on the full-size bents. So I keep bolting the, the sills in place and then bringing them in here and cutting them to length and then taking them into the other room to put the sway bracing in place. I also took to just temporarily clamping things in place because it, I didn't want anything to just tip over. Oh, well, that would be horrible. So I, I used some clamps to just temporarily clamp things in place and there's the fourth bent in place. So there's all four of the full-size bents under the trestle. Wow, it is starting to come together. It's beginning to look a lot like a trestle. There we go! <laughs> The view from the river is really impressive. No kidding. Makes sure it's a really big trestle. It really is. I sure hope you let the crazy glue dry and your head isn't stuck. That has happened to me in the past. Me too, and that worries me. As I was getting the river's eye view, I stuck my head in frame and I thought it was kind of fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> So now I'm going to add a second set of angled posts as per Rio Grande Southern practice. You can see those here. And those I was uh, able to simply slide up between the sills and then drill a million more holes and uh, bolt those to the sway braces and the sills. So there's a total of four full height bents that go all the way to the floor, which is to say the, the river. And then there's a, another bent, which only goes part way down and attaches to the side of the cliff. There's also going to be two abutments. But first I need to construct this shorter bent. It's about two thirds of the length of the other four. Oh look, it's a baby bent. Yeah, where a lot of trestles will have all of their bents mostly the same size, most trestles will have them in various sizes. In this case, four full-size bents and then one little baby bent down and at the end. It doesn't reach the ground. <laughs> it, it will when the ground gets built. Oh. <laughs> Which is the next big project here. That and building the abutments, which also attach to the cliff faces. The problem is, as you noticed, there's no cliff face. No. It's just wall. Exactly. So the next project is to build the cliff faces, and then we can build the abutments that go under the far ends of the bridge on both the east and west end. So that's not the reverse side of Mount Rushmore, is it? The reverse side of Mount Rushmore? Yes, the cliff faces and abutments. Faces and abutments. Okay, I, I get it. <laughs> anyway, the abutments also include other features like this little retaining wall. And then because I'm so easily distracted and such a random individual, I decided that not only should it have this little retaining wall, it should have a mine. Oh, absolutely. So just on a lark. Uh-huh. A mine. Yes. 
So anyway, the abutments and the mine will be subjects for future shows. Right. Now, you wouldn't want to miss those future shows. So if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. Also, if you liked this video, you might want to consider mashing the, the like button. Exactly. But because you don't want to miss this stuff, you do want to subscribe. And the easy way to become a subscriber is with the upcoming blue button. What? Not the light at the end of the tunnel? <laughs> No, the blue button. Okay. The, the upcoming blue button. Are we ready for that? Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>